And we begin where we left off. Monica! Hmm. Seem more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. Just kind of a thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on paper. Cho choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. Oh, I see. Soka. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what poem is about isn't the right question. I'm going to be abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You'll never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait. Is this tip out even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Immediately save. <laughs> Fuck that. I don't know what the hell you're talking about anymore. I feel like there's more here. Well... I know I want to go to Sairi. Mm. Naruto, I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Uh, I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. There's days in this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the one who feels that way, so... Eh, no way. Not even Atsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest with you. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh, <laughs> what, what? Stop thinking weird, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking. That's... Let, let's not talk about that. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess what I'm trying... Saying... Is that... I can feel more feelings through you than I can myself. You have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting my busy that business all the time. Eh. I don't know if I understand. Hmm. <laughs> never understand when I try to explain things to you. Do you, Zairi? I pat Zairi's head. <laughs> hey! I'm not kidding, you know? You sure about that? N maybe. Sarah starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Naruto? Will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Uh, why? Because, well, it's the first time you've written something like for me. <laughs> Sorry, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> uh, are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we get home. Go home. Really? Snap! Uh, I broke my pencil! Sayuri hastily bends down to pick up the pieces she dropped. But being inattentive as her, of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. Uh, so sorry! It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayuri clutches the desk beside her to support herself, knee shaking. I, I'm a little clumsy today. Is there any way I can see the pictures? I wonder what she looks like the day before. Just so you guys know, um, since I know the ending, this means a lot. This could mean a lot. And I don't like it. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Y yeah. I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I like it. Bottles. 
I pop off my scalp like the lid of a jar cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and plug one out. It's warm and tingly. There's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in a bottle. And bottles all in a row. My elections makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging, digging, scraping, scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my front locked my locked front door. Finally all done, I opened up and I and in come my friends. And they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frankly pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my fingers. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. All I hear is echo, 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 inside my head. I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> Holy shit. Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. Uh, I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Alright. So, I want y'all to know, because I've been down this fucking road before, uh, and I already watched this, uh, things are about to take a turn sooner or later, and I want you guys to remember that. Turn is not going to be a good time for all of us, and it's going to be a very sad time, but in the end, I want you to know, in that poem, you keep, every person has so much that they can give. And if you keep jarring up bottles just for your friends so they can have them, sooner or later you're going to be left alone with an empty bottle, is what she's trying to say. And that empty bottle will lead you down dark paths that you may not have ever seen before. So what do you think? Next time that you're throwing all, your all into making someone else happy, remember to make yourself happy too. Save a couple bottles for yourself. It's not all about the other people. It's also about you. You're important, just so you know. Not only just for me, I'm not saying that because you're watching my YouTube video, I'm saying that because you're a human being. You have purpose in your life. No matter what, someone around you will miss you. I'm telling you right now, it always gets better. And you can always count on true friends to give you a bottle. Anyways. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. Yeah, I'm pretty passionate about this, huh? Hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing is best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Don't make that joke. <laughs> don't don't get ahead of yourself. Sarah's so always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. One of this one of those times. Seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Who should I show my poem to next? Sorry. Natsuki! Natsuki-chan! Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better either. Whew. Huh? Phew, what? Uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take it as a win. And I get the feeling that you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait. I knew that was a compliment. <laughs> Glad to see someone recognize my experience. Well then, keep practicing. Maybe you'll get be as good as me someday. That's, uh... Something tells me not to so completely miss the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from y yesterday. You... Huh? You think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same way, Willings. But you never really st struck me as her type. Sayori's a type, all of a sudden? 
Well, I don't know, but honestly, how could someone so, er, uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? Fuck. It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. <sighs> that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of Bloom. See, we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Amy likes spiders. You know what I, he I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her anymore. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm going to tell everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. I mean... Yeah, no you don't. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with such much with ugh, with much simpler anal anal analogies. It helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of the poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my. That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I read it to be easy to relate to. If you ever see me pause for a second, I'm looking probably I'm probably staring at the character looking for something to show the truth about their background. Like I know the background of most of these characters. My question is, where are the fucking It doesn't show and I hate it. I hate it. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid of. Afraid if people would find out, they'd make fun of yours think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares about someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for like for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely oh, well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. I'm sure a lot of people, other people can too. It's not. It's what I do best, after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying motion is important, but I don't want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow. Two. So look forward to it. <sighs> Who should I show my poem to next? Yori. I like all of them. Some of them like. Some of them like. Eh, eh, yeah, boy. And some of them like. Yeah, boy. Ugh. I'm burping. Shitting myself. Whatever the fuck I'm doing. Let's see what you've written for today. Hmm. Well done, Naruto. Your says are already improving. Really? Thanks, Yuri. Come for you, that means a lot. Uh, it, it's nothing. I'm just happy to help inspire fellow writers. I know you're new to this, so don't worry so much. It seems like you can't get your poem to feel perfect. You don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings. And write down the things you see in here. That's one way to truly enable your readers to see into your mind. It's a very intimate ex exercise. I see. This is certainly an interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have um, an example of that if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and Timothy hands her poem. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of the night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. It's a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the sc scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendency as a non ordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread, my subconscious, well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hunger curiosity, the raccoon, 
and urge the moon increments its play its phase and reflects that much more light off of my cutting knife the very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend i slice the bread fresh and soft the raccoon becomes excited or perhaps i'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal the raccoon has taken a falling taken to following me you can say that we've gotten quite used to each other the raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently so my bread is always handy after my brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon slows me to its. The raccoon shows me its excitement. I rush up love, classic pav. pavl. 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 fuck! pavivian. pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. She's a raccoon. And she loves a knife. So she's a raccoon that loves a knife. Interesting. She did take a little more of a dare this time. It made it a little bit longer. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem's about. That's right. It's a bit close to my preferred writing style. Using poems as a canvas to express vivid imagery, conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well... I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I want to express the feeling it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobby. It's those sort of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself, so I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Uh, she, she did. Yeah, she was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anyone. She, she's right. Uh, I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. So that you two have that in common. That's... Well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like a kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry. I have no reason to. Oh, okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Uh, I might be ranting a little bit now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. 